Okay, Drake here. Today's date is September 4th. I actually got to close the drawing up and do a pick, but I'm not on that same machine. I'm actually on a different machine right now. I'm actually on a new laptop I got. The camera kind of sucks. It's a 720. Actually, it's a $1,500 laptop, not a 2000 but after taxes, you know, it's going to add another 150 disposal fee, you know. And upgrade to Windows Pro so I have the BitLocker support so now my hard drive is fully encrypted so there's this is all set and ready to go as a secure machine which is actually what I'm targeting because Apple did it for years and I'm a PC user and after being hit by ransomware attack and even have a dream of being hit again today so I'm actually strongly strongly going over all of my security with a time comb and all of my personal data is now being backed up re-encrypted everything you name it I've got it so life updates not much going on um, I don't want to talk too long I got back from the USS Hornet that was fun I got to sleep there which was probably bad because I didn't get any sleep at all with a cold spot hovering over me if that's a cold spot I don't know but it was a fun adventure got to kick off with Bob this other guy which is kind of funny because he asked me the golden question in the middle of a conversation I was talking to uh, Vicky which is one of our investigators and we were setting up our camera rigs and trying to film some more I need to get with her on the filming part because now we have machines that we can edit this with free toss tools like open shot I need to come up with some creative way of outlet to do that and start publishing stuff as maybe it can turn into something on its own although most of the paranormal community don't really get much from marketing but at least if we get something is better than nothing even if it's like a couple hundred dollars a month or a hundred dollars that pays for the bills so that's the goal is to try to get some more publication in the creative side because I can't keep spending anything creative and I think this year it's fursuits are pretty much dead with me I may end up calling it and canceling in the last two if it doesn't nothing happens in December so I'm pretty much done washed up thousand dollar two thousand dollar don't matter to me I'd rather buy a house and I'd rather invest in a lawn and I'd rather build it my way and get a sculptor and learn to make a professional looking bronze dragon on my studio porch something along that line something that's worth presenting that later on it can actually add to the value which it probably doesn't because no one wants that artistic value they want a family house but who knows maybe it can turn into a mansion you know make mansion Drake's mansion it's a nice ring to it Drake Industries after all we invent the impossible so I'm back at Bob's office and this is my recording to using a 720 camera which is probably better than the previous one but it works well enough I will probably have to look into other solutions later my desktop I can get a much better camera for a lower cost but that's a desktop because a desktop is extremely flexible your limitation is how you build it versus a desktop you buy it to the specs so this one was actually the MSI Katana not a bad laptop a little bit out of plastic speaker sounds nice displays up there no touchscreen because most gamers don't need a touchscreen it's a gaming laptop it's got the gaming essence I love the LED on the keyboard it's an RGB LED so I can customize what color I want which is cool but being a person who likes night vision it's red all the way it's always red for me so and it came forward even though you could buy a lower lower end than this I think the video card here is a 4070 it is rendering beautifully I've seen more than 60 frames running on um, full screen on VR chat so no doubt this machine has all the video assets it needs for something less than two thousand dollars close to two thousand with tax only argument is is they don't make gaming computers with Windows Pro that was an easy fix. Windows in place upgrade worked beautifully this time for once. And I haven't seen anything else really other than the fact that it's a kind of a low end in the gamers market, but it still actually performs really well. So for what I'm using it for, this is actually perfect. And uh, the only thing I could argue is the power supply. It's 300 watts. Now, if you're going to carry a heavy power supply that does 300 watts, it's going to need to be a heavy brick. So this actually weighs a lot. But most gamers who have a high-end computer don't really care about that. It plugs in and it works. And if it blows smoke out, that's a hot rod right there. So they don't really care. But yeah, that's pretty much my little five-minute spiel on that. 
I ordered another one from another company. I'm going to try to rig it to a power converter so I can run it in the car. But I fear the fact that the amount of current and without actually checking it. And I don't even know if it's a three wire power supply. Because if I unplug it, it'll go to battery mode. But it's got this. It's going to switch video modes. Yeah, see, it's going to switch video modes when it switches to low power mode. So it may be using the IGP integrated power integrated. But looking at here, um, I think it's actually a two conductor, but it's got a center pin. And I'm going to have to look it up to see if anyone knows about that. If not, I'm going to buy another makeshift power supply that can probably run it in low power mode. And I'm going to attempt to play around with with power conversion and power factoring because what I could do is I can take another power supply that works with it it's compatible hook it up to a bench supply I think I got one that I can generate 19 volts at about 10 amps does it say? Uh, what does it say? Uh, Chaconi heavy okay so it's a yeah 10 amp power supply so that's almost 2,000 uh, 200 watts so I think the biggest one I have upstairs will do see most of my bench does about 3 amps 19 volts is easy to go it goes up to 24 I think the small one goes up to 17 the upper one the Altec one I got I think will do 4 or 5 amps so we can test it with that one then I've got another one that goes up it's an analog one I got twiddle and plug it in I think it's got a lambda a sink in the back where you can sync to a, a basically you can make two track each other it's a tracking regulator but uh, I have to read the manual on that one because I think I've only used it as a 10 amp 12 volt supply even though it's adjustable between I think like 20 and 2 volts so if I can set it up to like 19 and a half and clip an amp meter to it it's actually got one on it so I might be able just to use that one good enough for what I need and to see in real time how much actual current it uh, draws and if I can lower the voltage down to 15 and this laptop might take it. Plus they also tell me if that third wire is magical. Some of the Dells have this interesting setup because they they have three wire power supply and the third wire is the EEPROM and from what I've done so far with a few of them that have burned out and I've gotten around it um, and this happened also with the Surface Pro too is if you even though it takes 12 volts they have a few pins used for EEPROM and other sources they can do on their pin out and their power charging pin. That's why I don't really like to mess with those. But we can make them work. There are ways of jerry-rigging them, whatever, and overriding the power control. But the way it's supposed to work is that when you unplug it, it goes to battery mode, lowers the processor down from going up to a full 100 watts, drops down to about 50 watts, and then if you're a gamer, you'll complain about the lag because obviously it's in low power mode. But the idea is that it's unlike a desktop where we just put a UPS and if the power goes out for like 30 seconds, the generator kicks in, we generally don't care because we're exactly b built like a tank but with a lot of heavy weight. So on a laptop, you get the same effect on the lower end ones because their power supply, I think their charging circuitries are only go up to like 100 watts, maybe 90. So that's why the tiny little power supplies, they only need to push out about 3 to 4 amps at around 19 volts. So you don't really run into that problem. Now, because the Dell industry, they have the small compact supply and all the way up to the really big one. I think the compact ones for projectors and tablets, while the bigger ones, and that's what that third wire magically does. The third wire is an EEPROM that tells the computer's BIOS what the power supply capability is. And if the power supply capability is really low, it will actually restrict the charger. I'm hoping this laptop has that. I kind of want to return and go and get a Dell or a Lenovo. Lenovo may have that same setup, but their plug is square, and it's whatever Lenovo. You put everything in the back because that's where everyone wants to dock their computer. I understand, and you have fans on the side to keep it cool so you can use it as a desktop because no one wants to build a computer and figure out what they need to buy. They would rather get more than what they need and just not use what they have. Uh, yeah, tell me how you're going to go green that way when you have a $700 video card that eats up 6 amps of power. Yeah, Anyone who built a desktop computer has done power supply chaining, which is the illegal method to do it, because the connector on a, v on a VGA card, which is designed to handle so many number of watts with parallel number of wires, some of those pins are actually used for, uh, for power supply detect. 
that's why you have the six pin, the eight pin, you ground to certain pins, and the thing doesn't boot or the BIOS of the video card will complain that it's missing a pin because it can sense that when you're missing a ground because you can check the resistance between the two. Smart, see? So Dell used the third wire. I am hoping that the third wire here on the other aftermarket power supply gets recognized as something different. Uh, to be honest, I haven't been into the BIOS of this uh, computer, and I'm hoping to spend some time to see if there's a BIOS key. They have an EFI loader, which may not have a traditional BIOS, so I may have to do a little digging. Some traditional BIOS has that, but that doesn't mean the EFI loader works in place of it. It just means it hands off to Windows, and Windows has BIOS. As a matter of fact, MSI, if I can do a screenshot here, which I can't do a screenshot in real time, will actually tell me on the control utility a little more about the computer, which is kind of cool, but that's just MSI. That's not like anything that I need to... There it is, hardware monitoring. Okay, so it tells you your GPU, CPU usage, all the technical data that majority of the gaming nerds don't really care about unless they're showing off stuff like, my GPU is running at such and such. Yeah, bullshit. It can care less because uh, it turns out you really is not numbers, it's, for, it's efficiency. So I am trying to find out because there's this mode called gaming mode, hardware diagnostics, and the rest is just lighting. And if it's an EFI loader, they probably have a driver that talks to the system BIOS or power management controller. And that's the part that I don't know about. I only know it from engineering that and phones and all that use the same controllers. So what may actually be telling me, and I may be able to find it, so right there, see it says MSI hybrid graphics mode. So it does switch into low power mode when you're in battery mode. So that might be something to look into. Um, crosshair display, what the heck is that? Crosshairs. Oh, just, pff, that's stupid. Okay, close lid action, do nothing, do default. Yeah, so you don't stop in the middle of a game. Just remember, their customer base is gamers, not techies. And not all gamers are techies because the only game I played is I got into the hacking industry because I was so good with hardware and figuring stuff out real fast. And if you think about it, that's a game of its own because you're solving a puzzle. The only goal is that whether you're breaking the code or cracking the crypto key, if you could figure it out, there's so many permutations. But those are the thing about that gaming. So there's this, oh, so you can even disable the switch key. Wow, I didn't know that. Because I know gamers complained about that Windows FN and stuff like that. So they get an external keyboard and this and that. And they load a custom filter driver that disables it. So many other crap that's out there, but whatever. I understand. So actually MSI actually has support for disabling it. That's cute. So, okay, close button should minimize. Close, okay, always update. Dark mode, light mode. Uh, I don't want MSI collecting information, but I don't really care. They have apps. So they have this game tuning mode I don't really care about. Uninstall. See, what I don't see, update. They have their own updater engine. Mm -mm -mm. Windows G to generate game bar and display function. So they actually have a lot of interesting functions here, but that's not what I'm looking for. They have system diagnostics. I'll install that. because so I'm hoping to find if they have a utility to talk to the BIOS. Some of them do. I know ASUS did. I don't think ASUS makes... Actually, no, ASUS does make laptops. I should have looked in to see what they had in their product line. But their gaming one is generally made of plastic because all the metal is used to keep the GPU cool. That's assuming you're using the high-performance GPU. See, that's the mistake a lot of people make is that they'll go about and buy something because it's company's money and they'll buy something expensive and then they'll run it on battery and start bitching about bitching and complaining. I've never had problems with computers because when you know what hardware you buy it for, you know what its limitations, you work around it. If the hardware has a small amount of hard drive, thanks to cloud, you could sync only what you need, even though your cloud drive could be two terabytes in size. Now, if you have an external hard drive and a network drive, sure, you can get a good router, but then you can have performance issue to upgrade everything to gigabit. I did that here at Bob's place, but they're all the same thing. You tune everything to what you need. The problem is you have people that says, I need a computer, but I don't need to know how to use it. So it's like a misnomer. It's like, okay, then I can't teach you how to drive a computer. It's like cars. Yes, one pedal makes it go and the other one makes it stop. But in between, you've got the shifter. Okay, so then you got L1, L2, you got neutral drive. 
but most people who don't speak English just want to know the basic function and that's enough for them already and they will screw that up so so you run into there as well that if you don't read it now when I bought my car at least the first one I actually did read the manual and stuff and some people do read it and they get freaked out when they don't use the proper gas and all the stuff but I don't run into that problem why because I know how an engine works I know how a car works and I know how headlights so I can fix a lot of the small things which is good now the younger generation is getting into that but people have to get the fancy stuff and when you get more fancier it's much harder to fix anyhow I just installed some apps here and I actually just did some updates so queuing for installation yeah it's actually gonna do its thing because everyone has an auto updater that actually works I mean that's better than going to the site and impressing your friends you downloaded an updated version of the app and reinstalled it uh, whatever whatever it's but you know what? If you buy something that's newer, and late, newer isn't always better, but in the tech world, newer has one benefit. You don't need as much labor work to get up and running. So if time is an issue and you can hire other techs, buying the more expensive stuff does actually help. But if you still don't know the basics, you're still going to run into the same problem because the basics are still there. But the good news is you don't have to know about it most of the time. I just installed the drivers. Okay, so it installed the newer drivers for the video card. Good to go. And I just wasted a whole hour doing that, so. All right. Well, I guess that ends the 16 minute charades of Drake's rant, but I'm going to call it a night and I should have head home 15 minutes ago so I can finish that drawing. So don't nail me if I'm about 30 minutes late because I do need to get something to eat.